All right, so we're going to build, in my case, I got a 2-inch by 2-inch box, and it's 3 and a half inches tall. So we're going to build a template for that. So I'm going to go into Illustrator. And you need to make this uh, big enough to hold uh, uh, the packaging flat. So even though it's uh, a 3 inch, three and a half inch tall package, you got to count for um, all of the uh, flaps and stuff. So this is at least, uh, for my 3 and a half inch package, it's at least 8 and a half inches tall, um, flat. And it's uh, 8 and a half inches wide. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and specify the width as 8.5 inches. Make sure you type in inches because otherwise it's right now in points. And another 8.5 uh, inches. Okay. And we can switch that to inches too. There we go. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, what I usually do when I'm in here is I turn on my grids and my uh, document grid. So I'm going to go to View and I'm going to go to Guides and um, See what else? I'm going to go to view and go to show grid actually. So this grid is by default. If I go to preferences, and that's under uh, map, gets under illustrator preferences. Under um, on a PC, it'd be edit preferences uh, near the bottom. But I go to the preferences, and I usually go to my grids guides and grid, and I change how many uh, subdivisions if I need to. Uh, in this case, um, everything is full inches and half inches. So that's kind of nice. I don't have to really mess around with, with my uh, grids. So if I wanted to, I could do a grid line every half inch um, and then have my subdivisions. There'd be four little uh, sections between there. So um, since I do have some half inch things that I'm measuring. So you can alter your grid um, to kind of uh, go with whatever it is you're, you're working on. All right. So... <coughs> this is again a three inch I'm gonna draw the box quickly uh, I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and I'm gonna click anywhere I'm gonna go ahead and type in three and a half inches oh excuse me the width is two and the height is um, 3.5 okay and he just pops it right in there now what you want to do is usually you want to fill this with none and you can leave the stroke on there for now uh, later on, I'll make that a dotted line. Uh, but he needs to be positioned uh, right on the edge here and about halfway uh, in the document. Okay. Now, how do I know if he's half at the halfway point? I suppose I could count squares. The other thing I could do is I could uh, go to my align panel and I can tell it to align to the artboard and tell it to um, uh, center align to that artboard. And since he didn't move... Let me move him out of the way here. Try that again. Align. Make sure it's to the artboard and center line, and it'll pop it right to center. So I don't have to move. I don't have to guess. I hate guessing. Uh, I, you know, it's got these tools for accuracy here, so I just use them. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and Shift and drag this because I know I have, I know I've got four of these panels. So, plus I have a little tab out to the side. That's what this is for. Um, I'll deal with that in just a second. So I have all of these. I might want to go ahead and um, make this uh, instead of the basic line. Let's oh, excuse me. I'll bring up my swatches panel. This is what I really need to do. Let's expand that. And I want to make this a, a, a dash line. Every 12 points. Uh, you know, that's a little wide for this small box. So I might do one every six points. It'll tighten up that a little bit. Okay. So we know those are folds. Okay, and these don't need to be a full a full point wide. These are usually a half a point wide. They're too thick, um, otherwise. And the details do matter, so we keep these things small. Um, for the next thing I need to do is I need to make some flaps. Um, oftentimes I will just alt drag stuff because I I'm kind of lazy. Um, I'll just alt drag him up there and hold down the shift key and he stays in line. And then I'll alter how, how his height is. Now this flap is the interior flap. It doesn't need to be a full two inches. By the way, I should make sure that I go to view. And I do want snap to grid turned on in this case. Uh, it's really important. Otherwise, I don't know if I'm being accurate. So go to view and snap to grid. Because I'm most certain that probably did not snap to the grid um, the way I needed it to. So it's snapping to it now. 
but this won't be a full two inches. This will be about a half an inch short of that. So cool thing is I have my grid sections in a half inch. So I just pull it down to the dark the next dark box. Um, because my I've done the, the, the template dummy here, I do know that uh, this corner right here needs to come in a bit to accommodate for the lid closing. I also probably could add an anchor point right about in here to that. Excuse me, I don't think I've hit it. Let me get the add anchor point button. Here we go. And um, I might turn snap two grids off if it's giving me problems, but I'll pull that in a little bit. This allows, again, the lid to, to get in there um, without it fussing. Now, if it's really thin paper, this all depends on the thickness of the paper. If that's really, really thin paper, then it would, I would turn snap two off and I would bring that a little closer to the edge. Okay, and I'm gonna make that um, a solid line instead of a dot dash line, okay? So there we go. Now the only problem here is we see that this bottom line is solid and it needs to be dashed. So you can actually go in and um, uh, open that path up. So we might, uh, um, do that. I'm having a hard time with my brain for just a second, so I'm just going to use the eraser tool, erase it, and then, oh, that's not what I wanted. Well, I'll drag over those points and delete those, and then I'm going to drag over this point. This is the white arrow tool, and I'll delete those as well. There's probably an easier way to that. I was just having a, a moment with my mind, so there we go. Now I have solid lines for the uh, uh, cuts and the dash line for the fold. I got rid of that line down there. Now, it's probably safe to say that this guy can be used over and over again now because we're talking about perfect geometry and symmetry. So I can just simply alt drag him down to uh, the bottom. Let me try to get him without getting the other guy. Okay, there we go. Hold down the alt key, the shift key, and bring him down there. Um, now for that, I can just flip it. Uh, let's go transform. And our flipper. I don't think I have all my tools out here that I want so I'll just go to object and transform and I'll just uh, I'll, I'll uh, flip that reflect it horizontal hit OK he's going the other way okay so I didn't have to redraw him I just had to flip him. Um, now these guys here they're also going to be over here so I'm going to hold down a shift and the alt key Bring them over there, but they need to be mirrored. So I'm going to go to Object, Transform, and I'm going to flip those. Um, I'm going to reflect those, rather. And uh, that'll be vertically. And I can always hit the preview and see if it's doing what it needs to be doing. Sure is. And I hit OK. So as long as I'm using Snap2 Grid on and using some of these tools, I do not have to fight with the software. It's really super, super simple. The next uh, thing I'm going to do is... Um, I've got uh, a little, uh, I've got a lid here and a lid here I've got to make. And so I'm going to grab, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and draw it. It's got snap two guides on there. And I did have this as two inches, uh, but it also has, oops, a half an inch flap. Okay. So this guy, he's cut here, cut here, cut out there. He'll have a fold here, and I need to get rid of that line there. Um, so I'm going to draw this line here for the fold. And that, again, would be a dash line, about six points. These will come in just a smidge, these corners. So I can highlight these with the white arrow tool, nudge that in. Oops, I need to add an anchor point here because when I nudged it in, it didn't make just a, a nice little corner from the fold. So add an anchor point when you need to do this kind of thing. There we go. Added one to both sides. Now all I have to do is grab each one of these and bring it in one. And again, with Snap2 Grid on, it just snaps it right to the next grid, grid line. Super easy. Uh, this down here needs to be a dotted line, not, um, not a solid line. I'm going to move him up so we can see that. That needs to be actually gone. So again, I'm going to do something a little weird and just erase it and then go in and grab my white arrow tool and grab the ones I don't need and delete them. Now, there's a, like I said, there's probably an easy way. To just right now, today, that's working for me. So there's that one. <coughs> now, it's uh, safe to say that the bottom of the box is almost identical to this guy right here. So I'm going to take that, zoom out a little bit, 
hold the alt key, drag him down, and I'm going to go to object and transform, and I'm going to reflect him in the horizontal and hit OK. Perfect. So simple. It really is. As long as we have snap tube grids and we're using our grids, this stuff becomes super, super crazy simple. All right, the last thing I'm going to do over here is I need to draw a box for this flap. Oops, there we go. It's funny when you go out past the artboard, it doesn't want to snap too. That was weird. Okay, I'm going to grab this anchor point, use the arrow key to arrow it down. I grab this anchor point. This is the white, white arrow tool. Move it to arrow it up. And this needs to be a dotted line. Let me move that out so I can see. Um, so I'm going to erase. Get rid of this. Again, you guys might find a simpler way for that. Get my uh, white arrow tool. Grab the things I don't need. Hit the delete key. And then move this back. I am now done with my template for this box. I would save it typically as an EPS. Um, and then I would place this into InDesign and place my design over that. But without having built what we call a dummy, which uh, was due today, without having built that dummy, we really don't know the measurements and we don't know really where to start. That's why it's so important. Format in, in the book on, on I know on uh, the book for... Um, Fundamentals of Design, which is one of the first classes we take, the first thing they talk about is format. So before we can design anything, we have to know what is going on. So here we are. We have our format. Now we go. I go into InDesign. I create a document a little bit bigger than this. Actually, you don't need crop marks on a die line. People know what to do with a die line. You don't need all these little crop marks out there. Um, I know when you guys had, some of you guys had me typography last semester when you're putting crop marks and stuff on everything. It's really not necessary for this Illustrator die line. People know what to do with the die line. But I could place this in its own. Um, I place this in its own uh, layer in, in InDesign. I might go ahead and put it. I might turn on grids and uh, uh, set the grid there the same as what I did in Illustrator. That way I'm being accurate because accuracy does count here on packaging. So when I open my InDesign document, it can be an eight by eight, but I need bleeds. I'm sorry, that was eight and a half by eight and a half. I need bleeds on my stuff, so this should be my document. If it's an eight and a half by eight and a half um, uh, template for cutting, then I need to add another half inch onto that um, both sides. So this needs to be nine by nine, um, so that I can accommodate bleed. And the fact that the printer doesn't always print right to the edge; it's got a quarter inch that it eats away there. So it wouldn't print on an eight and a half by eleven necessarily. No, nope. wouldn't print on any by eight and a half by eleven because we can't print full bleed. I'd have to print this to eleven by seventeen. Even though it looks small and it seems small, it still has to go to eleven by seventeen inch paper. So I'm gonna create a new document. I might as well just make it tabloid. Why not? I'm gonna print on it anyway. Do not worry about any margins on this because it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna put zeros and everything. And the number of columns would just be one. Take off facing pages, hit OK. And I'm going to turn in. I'm going to go here and turn on my um, my grids and guides. So I go to view grids and guides. This would be show baseline grid, I believe. No, or is it document grid? I'll have to look. Let's turn that off. View. Let's show baseline grid. No, maybe it's document grid. View document grid. There we go. It's document grid. And I would go here to InDesign Preferences. Again, on the PC, it would be under Edit Preferences. InDesign Preferences, and we would go to Grids and Guides. I actually would just be a, hmm, Grids? Yeah, let's see. Okay. Oh, we need to convert this to inches. Hold on. Right-click on these rulers, make them inches. Yep, there we go. Because I don't know, I can't equivalent, I, I can't do the math for points right now. I'd rather not. So I go to InDesign and go to Preferences. And now when I go to Grids, it should be in uh, inches. Yes. So it's got one every half an inch. Oh, no, here it is. Grid line every one inch. I want that a half an inch in my case. And the subdivisions, I want it to be four, just like I had in Illustrator. And the same thing, you have to set horizontal and vertical both on this. In Illustrator, you only have one. It assumes you want horizontal and vertical uh, the same. So we have to change those 
to be what we had in, the illust in Illustrator. And then I go to place my stuff that I did in Illustrator. Go find that. Now keep that Illustrator file. Don't throw it away once you place it in InDesign. And he will be in his own layer. Probably should turn Snap 2 grids on. Yep, it's already there. Snap 2, yep. And the grid lines are kind of, I turn those off a lot. I'm like, ugh, they're just so noisy and I don't like looking at them. I also might want to make the display performance of this object by right clicking on it, make the display performance high quality so I can see what it's actually doing. And I'll probably want to center that. Um, so let me go to the align panel. It's object and layout align. It's not like Illustrator, it was hanging out up there. And I'm going to tell it to align to the artboard. In this case, it's aligned to page. And I'm wanting to center align it both this way on the uh, uh, vertical and on the horizontal. And is it going with my grid lines? Now, probably not. So let me look and see. Well, it's trying to. So now I need to pull that up so it'll go right to the grid line. I want this to, oh, I need to pull this over too. So even though it's center of the page, I don't necessarily need that right now. I need it to really go to the grid lines. So there we go. I want this half inch, I want every darker line to match up with a darker line there. Now, it's okay to turn these grids off because they do really mess with your head. So we would turn grids and guides uh, off. We go to hide document grid. I would go to layout or to layers rather, double click on this and call this the cut file. And then lock that son of a gun so he doesn't go anywhere and then create new layers and design on top of that. You will when you need to print, when, let's say I have a design, maybe I've got a whole, oh gosh, you guys don't even have to be careful. If I wanted a solid color back there, I just draw across that whole thing and go to my swatches, get my Pantone books, get my color, and I can say, I want this whole thing pink. Now you may want to move your layer up so you can see that. You guys do not have to be careful about your bleeds on this thing, okay? You have to have them if you have things going to the edge. But they don't have to be like perfectly shaped the same size as this template, okay? So if I had multiple colors of something, um, and I might want to turn Snap 2 Grid on because uh, I need those to snap. But let's say I had this panel as one color, my lid. Let me zoom in. Definitely turn on Snap to Grid because it's you're just guessing. Oh, make sure you don't have strokes on stuff. Mine has a stroke. Can't see that when you're when you're uh, zoomed out. Let's just go here to swatches and say no stroke, please. And go to View and Grids and Guides, and this should snap to the grid. Ah, there we go. Snap to Document Grid. There it was, and it will snap right to. Perfect. Snaps right to it. Here I want an eighth and eighth of an inch bleed. So you want that, that's going out to the edge. This is meeting up with a, another panel, so we don't have it going across here. So if that guy is pink, oh, better pull him down so he's right to the edge. And then this panel right here, he might be blue. So with uh, this we want to bleed, and here we don't. So maybe I'm doing this cyan. Again, we want to make sure uh, snap 2 is on, make sure those snap right in there. It's a great thing about InDesign. We got a bleed on the outside. There we go. Now you want to make sure if you're putting uh, photographic images or illustrations, make sure you illustrate enough out to the edges so you can have that bleed. Okay? Don't forget that quarter of an inch, or I'm sorry, it's eighth of an inch. Don't forget that eighth of an inch you need out there to the bleed. So you, even though you're illustrating something for a certain panel, so this would be two inch wide panel by three and a half, I'll go two inches wide plus an eighth of an inch on both sides, even though I might not need both, need both sides. But I get a little extra, stuff that I know is going to get cut off. So make sure when you're creating your artwork and you're grabbing images and stuff like that, you, you deal with these bleeds. Okay? So there you go. Thank you. You're welcome.